Let's go over aldehydes, our next homologous series. I'll teach you all the things you need to know about aldehydes, how to identify an aldehyde, how to name aldehydes, and then towards the end, I'm going to contrast aldehydes and ketones because they're quite similar, but obviously very different. So the compound that you see on screen is an aldehyde. And I hope that you can see when looking at this compound, how it differs from ones that we've gone through already in this playlist. Check it out below if you haven't seen it is the fact that we've got a carbon double bond oxygen, but this is very similar to ketones. They also have carbon double bond oxygens, but what makes aldehydes very unique is that they have a carbon double bond oxygen and a H. And this functional group is always located at the end of the carbon chain. So when I say the end, it's either at the beginning, so on the far left, or on the right, far right. So this functional group is called the four mile group. So if I ask you, what is the name of the functional group of aldehydes? You're going to say a four mile group, this thing over here. If I ask you to draw the structural formula of the functional group of an aldehyde, draw the structural formula. So structure means you see all the little bond lines of the functional group. This is the functional group of an aldehyde. You draw this and it is always at the end of a carbon chain. And it's nice because aldehyde, A-L, the name always ends in A-L. So over here, an example of a name could be butanal, ends in A-L. That's how we know. Okay, cool. They're talking about an aldehyde and this aldehyde has four carbons. So this is a little summary of the aldehyde functional group. The name ends in AL, as I've mentioned. This is what you draw if they say draw the structural formula of the functional group, as I said, you draw this with all these bond lines. So what I mean is I need to see the carbon, I need to see the hydrogen, because if you draw it like this, it tells me that this comes at the end of the chain. That's why there's a hydrogen over here, double bond oxygen, and this little bond line must be there. And no, you do not draw a hydrogen here because if you draw a hydrogen here, you're not actually drawing the structural formula of the functional group. This exactly as is, so you can memorize it as is. This is what they want if they want the structural formula of the functional group. If you leave out this little bond line, you also get it wrong because remember every carbon needs four bonds. So one, two, three, four, very important. This is the functional group in its condensed structural formula. So if you see CHO, CHO, CHOW, whatever, if you see that at the end of a compound, CHO, I need you to think of aldehydes. This is what is going to distinguish it as an aldehyde. The name of the functional group, a formal group. And another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, this is the general formula of an aldehyde. I'll show you how this works in a second. The general formula, this is also something that you are supposed to memorize and know. So how do we name an aldehyde? So just like normal, just like we've been doing for all the other groups, you identify the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. This is always step number one in naming. This includes the carbon atom in the formal group. It has to be a part of the longest chain. The carbon atom in the formal group, this is the functional group, is always named number one. You write the name of the longest chain as if it were an alkane, but we replace the E with AL, like hexanal. I'll show you examples to explain this. And just remember, because the, the functional group, the formal group, is always at the end of the chain, it's always going to be on the first carbon. No matter which way you look at the molecule, it'll be at the end of the chain. Therefore, on carbon number one, we do not put the numbers in the name because it will always be on carbon one. So therefore, there's no need to put the number in the name. So if you look at this compound, first of all, how do you know or how do you recognize that this is an aldehyde? You see the carbon, double bond oxygen with the H, and this is located at the end of the chain. Remember I said it can be on either end, so it could be on this end, it could be on this end, but it's at the end. Then you see your longest chain has got one, two, three carbons, so it's going to be prop. This tells me it's an aldehyde, so remember you write the name as if it were an alkane, so it would be propane but you take away the E because it's not an alkane and you end in AL, proper null. Has to end in AL, no numbers in the chain because as I said, this is always going to be carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. Let's try another one. I always want you to pause the screen and try it first before I do it with you. 
Okay, so how do we know that it's an aldehyde? Because of the functional group over here, which is located at the end of the chain, this will always be carbon number one. Remember that. So when we name the carbons in the main chain, and how long is the main chain? One, two, three, four. When we name the carbons in the main chain, this will always be carbon one. We don't have a choice. This will be carbon two, carbon three, and carbon four. So it's an aldehyde. The name is going to end in AL. But now that we've highlighted the longest chain, we can see we have a methyl group over here. Remember, methyl groups have one carbon in it. This is a methyl group, and this is also a methyl group. And these methyl groups are located on the second carbon. So I hope you remember how to do this. We did this when we named alkanes and alkenes and so on. We go 2, 2, dimethyl. Okay, I'll explain why now if you've forgotten. Then butanol. Okay, let's break this name down quickly. So 2, 2, it tells me on carbon 2 and on carbon 2. So both of them are on carbon 2. We have a methyl group. Di just means that there's two methyl groups. So there's one year and there's one year. And my students always ask me, ma'am, why is it necessary to say 2, 2? Can't we just say 2 dimethyl? It's just the IUPAC naming rules. So IUPAC is just a certain thing that we follow. It's a certain set of rules. It's international standards. And those rules say that you have to mention the number of the carbon that each group appears on. So it's on carbon 2. And again on carbon 2, dimethyl means two methyls. But means that there's four carbons in the main chain. And it ends in Al. So remember, you would write it as butane if it were an alkane. You take away the E and you add in Al. Butanol. Right, here is another one. I want you to, again, pause the screen and try it. So remember, you have to locate the longest chain. And a lot of people will say, there's the longest chain. No, it's the longest continuous carbon chain. And this can actually, you know, snake. It can go up, down, left, right, as long as it's a continuous chain. So one, two, three, four. That's the longest chain. Can you see that there's no branches now that we've located the longest chain? The functional group tells me that it's an aldehyde. That's always on carbon one. There's no branches, so it doesn't really matter. This is going to be but anul because but four carbons in the main chain. Al because it's an aldehyde. Now, what do I mean when I say ketones are quite similar to aldehydes? So let's just briefly look and we'll take a look at this more in the next video, the very next video in this playlist. So you can see here, this is an aldehyde, carbon double bond oxygen with an H, and this occurs at the end of the chain always. In ketones, we have carbon double bond oxygen, and this occurs in the middle of the chain. So as soon as you see carbon double bond oxygen, you always have to ask yourself, is it at the end? Or is it in the middle? If it's at the end, it's an aldehyde. If it's in the middle, it's a ketone, right? So here's the difference in the functional groups between aldehydes and ketones. By including the H over here, you are showing that this is at the end of the chain. And over here, by including carbons on either ends over here, you are showing that this is in the middle of the chain. But why it confuses students is because they both have double bond oxygen. So just be on the lookout for that. Let's go over ketones in the next video. I'll see you there.